First thing that hits you is this uh, original stone floor. Mad, isn't it? I love yeah. It. So here you've got a uh, toilet there and a uh, very useful utility room. But let me take you through to this room. This is very special. Oh, that really has got a lot of character. You wanted cosy, if I remember rightly. Yes. Yes. <laughs> really nice. Really Again, nice. there's stone floor everywhere. Yes. It's fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. And beams that have got good headroom as well. Exactly. Yeah. Even yes. for you. Yeah, even yes. for me. There's a wood burner there. Also a little bread oven tucked on the side. Right. If you wanted right. to have an open fire, that you yeah. could very easily. Yeah. It's got an original uh, 15th century window there as well. Gosh. Really? Yeah. What do you think? Love it. Love Smashing. It. Yes. Bags full of character. Yes. Nice. Nice. Really has. That unique character feel continues next door in the kitchen. Come on through. Very bright kitchen. Lovely, lovely and light. Very nice. Not the largest, no, fair to say. But practical, I think. As long as you can get around to everything nice and easily, it doesn't need to be huge. See, yeah. I would have put money on the fact that you'd have said, oh, it's a bit too small. No, no. no. And even though it's clean lines, it's still got character with those windows. Hasn't it just? Stonework. You like it? I love it. Well done. Very well done. Oh, excellent. Downstairs seems to have hit the mark. So we'll head upstairs where the accommodation flows off a corridor and comprises of a family bathroom and two double bedrooms. I'm liking it. <laughs> I'm liking you today. <laughs> Honestly, I really am. <laughs> There's nothing, nothing wrong with the size of this when you think there's of the space around it. Absolutely. In the other rooms. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Against the clean lines in an old building. Yeah. Well, I, I think we should go and have a look at the business uh, end of the uh, equation, don't you? Yes. Come on then, let's go. Like the house, both holiday cottages have been completely renovated. The first provides a generous dining kitchen, a family bathroom and a good-sized double bedroom with a large reception room upstairs. But we'll take a look at the second cottage, which has a good income attached to it. Let me take you to the two-bedroom, though. This has been established, if you like. It takes about 14 grand a year. Does it? Yeah. Ooh, so 14 good. grand a year for that one, that without one. this without one. Without this one? Yeah. Yes, yes. Very good. It's pretty impressive, yeah, it's isn't very it? Attractive. And again, beautifully done. Should we go? Let's have a look. Come on. We're going upstairs to the main living room with its impressive vaulted roof. another lovely room. This is a lovely room, isn't it? Yes. Now, you said to me in the car as we were approaching that you wanted the guests that come on holiday with you to have an experience that's greater than their normal life. Mm -hmm. Would you be able to give them that here? I think it's provided Definitely. without any question a, a, a great experience here that they wouldn't get back home and it's so thoughtfully being put together. It, it is. Yes. The conversion is really very thoughtful. This property also benefits from a useful stair lift. All the remaining rooms are set out on the ground floor and consist of two bedrooms, one a nice sized twin and the other a double with its own ensuite. There's also a bright modern kitchen and a shower room. Our mystery house presents them with a real one-off proposition, but at what price? Let's talk money. Uh, what do you think it's on the market for? Well, I, I'll go first and I think it's definitely over our budget. Okay. And I'll guess at six hundred and seventy-five thousand pounds. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I'll say six hundred eighty-five thousand. Six hundred eighty-five thousand. Okay. Interesting. It's on the market for six hundred seventy-five thousand pounds. Okay. Well done. Oh. And the reason it's not on the market for you know one point five million or yeah. whatever is actually it's leasehold. Oh. Right. It's right. a leasehold property. Mm -hmm. okay. You know who the freeholder is? Go on. Duchy of Cornwall. Oh. Prince Charles. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, uh, has that changed things for you? I'm, I'm a great fan of Prince Charles, so I don't, see, I don't see a problem with that. I like Prince Charles as well. <laughs> they could visit. This property is currently held on a 39-year lease from the Duchy of Cornwall. There is often no automatic right of lease renewal. However, the Duchy regularly grants replacement agreements, subject to agreeing terms. So it's still very much an option for Peter and Lynn. Granted, our mystery property is over budget at £675,000, but that can be offset by the larger income potential from the two holiday lets. It gives Peter and Lynn a character home with a large living room and kitchen that retain their original features, along with two bedrooms. 
The two holiday cottages would earn them approximately £24,000 a year. Set in just over 590 acres of remote moorland, the dilemma has to be whether they could consider living here under a leasehold, which is held by the Duchy of Cornwall. I'm bowled over by this mystery house, really am. It's got so much. The position, the seclusion, the letting opportunities, uh, it's a really tremendous find. The mystery property is stunning. It's got everything that we asked for and more. It'll be fun having Prince Charles as our landlord. It's quite a talking point and uh, it's a dream property. Seen everything? Yes, I think we have. Happy? Yeah, yeah very much. Well. Listen, you've got loads to take in, yeah. uh, so let's not rush anything. I think you should go and uh, sit down somewhere and have a think and then we'll uh, catch up later. How's that? Excellent idea. Well, then. Country shows are important events for showcasing the very best of what rural life has to offer. And the annual Devon County Show represents one of the biggest highlights in the Southwest's agricultural calendar. With a history stretching back to 1872, it now attracts over 90,000 visitors, including a large number of competitors who come to exhibit their prized animals. And it's all under the watchful eye of chief steward and livestock farmer Edward Dark. Hey, Edward, morning. How are you? I'm fine. How are you this morning? Good. How long have you been involved with this show? Me, I've been actually stewarding, what, 45 years. Whoa! Yeah, and I've been chief steward for over 20 years. How much livestock is there in this show, then? Altogether? We've got uh, 1,450 sheep, about 550 cattle, and 200 pigs. Whoa! Yeah. Yeah. So what's actually going on behind us today? We're actually judging the wool on the hoof. That wool is on the hoof. That's right, yes. With around 60 native breeds of sheep in the UK, these wool on the hoof competitions draw together sheep breeders from across the country. They know that picking up a prestigious award for the quality of wool produced by their sheep is a real boost for their livelihood. I'm finding out how to spot a fine quality fleece from the wool marketing board's Stephen Spencer, who's judging the class. Morning, Stephen. How Morning, are you? Howard. Good yeah. to see you. Good to see you. Now, what we're looking for here, yeah. the style and the quality of the wool. Right. The finest wool is always found down the, the front shoulders of the animal. OK. We're then looking for the quality to be transmitted right down the back of the sheep, right down to the tops of the hind legs. OK. This one's a Border Leicester, quite okay. a prominent breed with its... Uh, big ears. Big ears, yeah. <laughs> it was a compliment. <laughs> it, it produces quite a big fleece. Right. You probably get three or four kilos off one of these. Wow. ..of wool. Very nice, uniform fleece. These are all class winners, and what I'm trying to do now is sort of pick the best from the best, as it were. Glad you're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> At last, the moment is upon us. Sheep and farmers have come from all over Britain uh, to uh, parade in this ground, and this is what they, they're all after, the winning rosette. I wonder who's going to win it. Tension is mounting. And the overall wool champion is... Congratulations. Thank you very much. Well done. Thank you. Well done. Well done, you. <laughs> You weren't expecting that, were you? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, this feels good. It does indeed, uh, yes. Congratulations. You have a great Very day. Much. Well done. To get an idea of what recognition in the competitive arena means for farmers, I'm meeting Ollie Allen, the show's secretary. How important is this for the farmers? Very important. It's their shop window. An animal can be brought here, and a rosette, which will cost me about £1.50, can make hundreds of pounds difference to the value of that animal. Is that important? Yes. Oh, yeah. 140 years after its first show, it's great to see Devon's rich cultural heritage is still thriving and so passionately celebrated. So, Peter and Lynn are keen to start a new life and a new business here in Devon. But I must say, it's been quite a big ask finding something that they both like. Peter's enthusiasm and uh, infectious smile has been there throughout. But it's been a little bit more difficult to please our Lynn. The question is, have we shown them something that completely hits the mark? Let's find out. It's been quite an experience, hasn't it, finding you to a house? It certainly has. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about the properties. Uh, first one uh, with the four acres of land, or just over four acres of land. You rounded that corner with all the right intentions, and I'd say halfway through the search, you, you, you lost your mojo a bit. Yeah, yeah. I think that's fair, because the house didn't have all the capacity to, to accommodate our interests. Right. And that particular house 
didn't really have the opportunity for us to do separate things. There was one living room there. The view was amazing, though. The view was, the view was stunning. I loved the view, and I, I loved the land. The, the holiday let it was quite small, and the outbuildings, although there was potential to do things with that, it did look a bit of a bit of a job for us. OK, well, let's move to the second property, and this one in the heart of the community. Uh, it had a, a fantastic business opportunity for you. Mm -hmm. It did. Uh, the, the letting opportunity there was, was good and could be extended, but again, it was really feeling trapped into that living space with the combined kitchen and sitting room as one room, and there was nowhere to get away from Lynn. <laughs> That's nice, isn't it? Yeah, charming. No escape from the wife. <laughs> yeah. But it was in a super location, and the nearness to the beach was quite a factor. Let's talk about the mystery property. The property that only had two bedrooms was uh, the remotest, or one of the remotest houses in England. Also only had uh, one living room. All the things that you uh, didn't want. Mm. No. I find myself uh, on the road to Damascus, being completely <laughs> changed from wanting to be in the centre of a community with lots of space within the house to finding that wonderful property out on the moors with no neighbour in sight and as you say with the one living room but it does have a storage space i can't see sea anywhere either i know i know <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the disadvantages it is a long way from the sea but it was a fantastic property it just just the sight of it there nestled in the side of the hill it's just picture postcard how do you feel about the fact that it's leasehold though We've steered clear of leasehold properties. Now, this, of course, is something new to us. We'll have to do some homework and some research in terms of the pros and cons of taking on a leasehold property. That sounds to me like you, you want to take it a bit further. I think I would certainly like to. Lynn, not so sure. I would need to think about it a bit more. I think it is really remote. But you were the one that was quite for being remote. I know. And I, I didn't want so much oh. land. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, you have so confused me over the last two days. We confused ourselves. I think you have. <laughs> I, I hope that you do find your, your dream property here in Devon. It's been fabulous being with you. It really has. Uh, it's been really good fun. You're a lovely, uh, genuine couple. So cheers. And uh, let's hope our paths cross again. Thank you. Cheers. Uh, cheers. All the best. Cheers. Yes. Thank you. Peter and Lynn's Devon adventure has come to an end. I think it's fair to say that we did finish on something of a high, but boy, has it been confusing, because I'm not really convinced that they actually knew what they wanted. The proof being that they went off the original wish list pretty early on. Sometimes you think you've got a clear idea of what you want, and then wham, your heart rules your head. And that's exactly what happened with Peter. I think it'll take him quite a while, though, to convince our Lynn, but I hope he does, because I think they'll both be happy in this beautiful county. Until next time, bye-bye. If you'd like to escape to the country in Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland or England and need our help, please apply online at bbc.co.uk forward slash be on a show.